Dusty joins us from home. I did want to let everyone know. Oh, look how good she looks. She looks fantastic. I got a new phone case. It's a fire and it says I'm literally stoked to be here. But no. Like the fire. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's that uh, we can't kick things off like that, Lindsay. That's <laughs> that's like bad juju. <laughs> You're Come welcome. On. Thank you. Tori is good for a corny joke. That's good. Yes. <laughs> I can't stop laughing. Thank you, Lindsay. Your laugh makes me laugh, so it worked out well. Well, we are starting things off today with some big entertainment news. The Dancing with the Stars cast was revealed this morning, and boy, are there some surprises. Here is the show's new host, Tyra Banks, revealing the stars this season. Let's all take a look. What's up, America? Get ready for an epic new season of Dancing with stars that will light it up. AJ McLean, Vernon Davis, Sky Jackson, Johnny Weir, Caitlin Bristow, Charles Oakley, Jeannie Mai, Justina Machado, Jesse Metcalf, Michelle Stout, Anne Haish, Monica Aldama, Neve Shulman, Nelly, and Carol Baskin. Lord, everyone is talking about Tiger King's Carol Baskin, who many claim, I didn't say anything, may have had a hand in the death of her late husband, which of course she denies, maybe to a tiger, was fed, but can she dance? That's what's important. Fans were pleasantly surprised to see Nelly on the show. Do you think he has the moves to make it? Yes. Okay, good, good question. And here at DVL, there are a lot of selling Sunset fans, so we're super excited to see Chriselle Staus. She will be dancing for the Mirrorball Trophy. I'm sorry, we just have to go back to my little cats and kittens, Carol Baskin. Is she going to kill on the dance floor? Oh, Lindsay, I'm predicting her to have a long run, not because I think she's a good dancer, but she is the name on here for, for uh, basketball fans is Charles Oakley, but she is the person that everybody's going to be looking for, and I think she's going to go far, even if there's some situations where she probably should have been eliminated. What do you think, Linz? Never mind that she may have or may have not murdered her husband. Let's forget that and put her on national let's, TV. Let's forget that, Lindsay. Excited. Let's forget that because I, what does Erica Cobb say? Fame, shame, it's all the same game. People know her. For whatever reason, she's famous, infamous. She, people know her. Murder, murder. We want to see the room. Though. I'm excited about Nelly. If nobody cares about Nelly. Like, I that's so, that's like everything that I grew up on. Like, I'm excited to see him dance. Lindsay, we're glad you could join us from a time machine. <laughs> uh, no, but, no, but Al, that's true. <laughs> Nelly was almost like too good for like I thought he was too big no, for this. I'll tell you this Nelly has done what I think 50 Cent has has done there's a lot of rappers because you forget rap is such a young genre of music that now we're seeing rappers kind of post rap career yeah but also making their name in other ways and yeah. like Nelly tours with a lot of country bands like big country bands I know him in Florida Georgia line, line yeah they toured together so Nelly still has a huge fan base in the Midwest and his music just makes people happy reminds them when they were younger so Nelly's a big name too what do you guys think about this Neve Shulman comes out there he is of course the host of catfish and it's not him dancing because he's been catfishing everyone mm. <laughs> okay thank you okay and then, uh, and then i don't know about that one <laughs> no no Lindsay, you encouraged her earlier so <laughs> you gotta you. take that you gotta own that and and okay <laughs> my bad and then there's Anne hache which is super random so you know let us know if you're watching i think a lot of people will will tune in because there's nothing else to do well uh we actually have to get to talk of the new allegations uh, switching gears here about the first lady melania trump there's a new tell-all memoir coming out okay by her former aide and very best friend she looked like she just read it <laughs> Her eyes are expressive. Named <laughs> Stephanie Winston Walkoff in the book, Stephanie claims Melania regularly used personal email accounts while in the White House. On Twitter, Lock Her Up was trending, which of course many of you will remember from the 2016 election having to do with Donald Trump attacking Hillary Clinton over her use of a private email server. Now the memoir also delves into allegations of this tension between Melania and her daughter-in-law Ivanka Trump, including an effort like I told you before to block Ivanka's photos from being taken. Do you see this? That was apparently on purpose called Operation Block Ivanka so that Melania would not let her face be shown. That sounds like something the Secret Service would have. I know. Uh, during the president's inauguration, <laughs> here's what Walkoff said about it on CNN this morning. Ivanka usurped Melania in every way that she possibly could. Ivanka wanted to control, uh, really, her her place in the administration. So I, she really was, you know, they call her, we call her, Melania called her princess, we called her princess. She really is the princess who wanted to be queen. There is a battle royale. I mean, it's friction, suspicion, de deceit, 
deception. I mean, it doesn't stop. Okay, so she calls it's it for a little inflection and a reflection. Yeah, right. Without any deflection. Well, very. Uh, <laughs> that's true. Um, she called it the Cold War between Ivanka and Melania. And Lindsay, I know you kind of live for this drama. Uh, is this interest you? Yes, uh, Operation Block Ivanka, like just straight up have an operation named after her to block her from pictures and all things. I can't wait to read this. <laughs> I think that's ridiculous and hilarious. But I also want to point out that Ivanka is not a government employee. So technically, yes, she can use her personal email. But if you're married to the person that wanted to put Hillary Clinton in jail for using her personal email, I think that that should be something taken into consideration. That's fair. What do you think about this idea that she also, Al, said last night on TV that when she felt she was getting thrown under the bus, this is Stephanie Walkoff, by the Trumps, she hit record and she has the receipts, the tapes? I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters. I think I was so dramatic. I, was, I, yeah, I know it just I, I really don't think that it fair. matters. I think the people that that still support the president uh, know that they they've accepted that he's a flawed man. Some have accepted that he's a very flawed man, but they say Trumpers for life. They mean it. They're like Tupac fans. <laughs> I bet you there's not a crossover there. <laughs> no, there's probably no not. Crossover. An extreme co Tupac collaboration. <laughs> no crossover. All right. Let me know if you are a crossover right there. I'd love to call you I out. wonder what the crossover between Tupac fans and Trump are. There's got to be somebody. Nobody. There's nobody. There's got to be that four Venn people. That Venn diagram is miles apart. Tupac touched a lot of people. <laughs> okay. A lot of people are slamming uh, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi today. Fox News reports Pelosi visited a San Francisco hair salon despite pandemic restrictions that only allow salon services outdoors. So Fox News obtained this security footage that shows Pelosi with a mask around her neck walking through the salon with a stylist wearing a mask following behind her. Now, the speaker's office defended her visit, saying, quote, the business offered for the speaker to come in on Monday told her they were allowed by the city to have one customer at a time in the business. The salon owner told Fox News that it was a slap in the face. But the question is, should lawmakers be called out for not following guidelines? Yes, I got my hair done. I wore a mask the entire time. I didn't take it off to do washings. I love Nancy Pelosi, but that can't be a double standard. They made you do that before the pandemic to curb the talking, though, so. That's so inappropriately rude. Okay. Lindsay, what do you think about <laughs> oh, what I, do, did you wear a mask when you got your hair done the whole time? I mean, I just think the irony here is that Nancy Pelosi actually makes the laws and maybe not that exact law for that exact salon, but you know, she knows what's going on. She yeah. knows that she's having that special appointment because she's a celebrity and they're squeezing her in. It's not outdoors. Like they're asking people to do it. Yeah. So I think she knew what she was doing, but she wanted her hair done like we all do. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're going to take that risk, you can't be a lawmaker, period. Other people maybe can. Nancy Pelosi, you can't do that. Yeah. I mean, you got to see it from both sides. You got to say, wear a mask on both sides. Right, Al? That definitely. Yeah. And you know, I was uh, talking to a friend of mine's wife this weekend, and she just like turned to me out of nowhere, and she was like, "I went and got my hair done." Like she, she just like she, she didn't even open her mouth all the way; just <laughs> came through her teeth. Like I got my hair done. I got my hair done. Yeah, it's just though. like I, you know, I people do want to maintain some sense of normalcy, not making any excuses for Pelosi that was wrong. But you know, the human beings are looking for some kind of normalcy. So I do yes. understand where it comes from. Right, least. exactly. Let us know. Yes, it's gotcha journalism, but it's fair to point out. Well, we do have to give a big DBL shout out to California lawmaker Buffy Wicks. By the way, coolest name in the That's whole wide world. That's a great name. Uh, she just had a baby and was not allowed, I'm serious, not allowed to have someone else cast her vote in her place because she was a mother and they didn't allow that as extraordinary circumstances. So she had to bring her new baby. Bringing a life baby. into the world, is it? Correct, Al. I'm serious. A one-month-old to work in order to cast her vote on the assembly floor. Let's take a look at Bucky Wicks. I was actually in the middle of feeding my daughter when this bill came up. And I ran down on the floor today because I strongly believe we need to pass this bill. <laughs> and Ellie agrees. So please, please, please pass this bill. And I'm going to go finish feeding my daughter. Thank you. Mike drop. By the way, her name is Buffy. Excuse me. Lindsay, what do you have to say for this? This is how we see our mothers and females. This is how we see them. Right, I think there needs to be some way that we can allow people that literally just had a baby some time to actually cast their votes, but through somebody else. Uh, that's kind of ridiculous that she had to go down there with the newborn. But I'm happy that that, take, that shows somebody has taken their role super seriously and going to do anything to make sure that something that she believes in gets passed. 
You know what country has more women in power than us, Al? Pakistan. We're behind Pakistan in women in power. Just fix it, guys. Like Lindsay said, just figure out a way. We figured everything out. We have the internet. We can figure out how to vote if you have a newborn. Stop I, it. I, well, listen to Al. Lindsay's talking to us from home. How yeah, do we do that? It does seem magical. Lindsay, please <laughs> stick around your magical weird space. Coming up on DBL, what issues matter most to voters this year? Law and order or the coronavirus? We're sharing your DBL take. And as the pandemic rages on, most of our employees are still working from home. We love y'all. We can't wait to see you soon. We'll be right back. Welcome back to DBL. Okay, let's be honest. The country is completely divided going into the November election, and we want to call that out. Republicans and the Trump campaign are focusing on the, quote, law and order issue. The show? The reruns? Bum, bum. Wasn't that a great show? It was. Jerry Orbach. Ugh. Dick Wolf. Okay. But a new Reuters poll shows 78% of Americans are actually more concerned about the coronavirus. Just 8% see crime as the top priority. So DBL Nation, we go to you. We want to take your temperature. What's the biggest issue this election? Is it crime or is it the pandemic? Now, before we share your comments, we want you to go to dblvote.com to weigh in. We're going to share the results of that poll later in the segment, so make sure you get there and keep watching. Now to your comments. I'm going to get their takes. Lindsay and Al, first up, it is Lindsay's. Clara from Facebook, Lindsay says, my husband has put his life on the line as a police officer for over 20 years. If you think I'm going to make law enforcement anything but a priority, think again. And that's understandable. I have an uncle that's in the police force in New York. I mean, one of the most dangerous places to be in the police yeah. force, especially when you talk about the volume of people. Um, but I also think that it, for me, if somebody doesn't put the fact that black lives need to be saved on their ticket and actually have some 
actual things like I've been saying that are going to show us how you're going to dedicate time to this community that's been suffering for so long, that to me is the number one issue because I don't think there's a problem with police being attacked on a consistent basis as often as we're seeing as there's a problem with black lives being attacked on a consistent basis. So if somebody doesn't make some grand statement about that, then I'm just really confused about what they're doing because aside from coronavirus, that is the biggest issue of 2020. Fair. That's a totally fair point. Al, this next one is for you. Teddy from Twitter says there's a reason the U.S has the highest infection and death rates of the whole world. His name is Trump. Yeah, I mean, look, however you feel about it, everybody wants to get back to some sort of sense of normalcy. And I think the hardest part is just like watching other countries start to slowly go back. And it doesn't seem like we're moving. We're still getting kind of spikes here and there. And then, you know, the CDC was taken over by other people. And now we're not getting numbers anymore. We're getting seems, misinformation. It just seems yeah, yeah. very weird. Yeah. So uh, I just think everybody wants normalcy to go so they can go back, get their kids in school, get back to work and get back to some kind of thing co called life because at this point it seems like a, there's no end in sight. Yeah, I agree with you. Next, Iris from Twitter says, it's absolutely infuriating that anyone in the right mind would choose to prioritize anything but the health and safety of Americans. I've lost someone to COVID-19 and I blame this administration. Lindsay, what do you have to say quick on this one? Oh, COVID is serious. I think people need to, our, our response has been largely sloppy. I think that we need to figure it out. We can't go into this winter and flu season with more people dying and then an uptick once again. And so I think that, yes, we need to protect people. I lost people um, from COVID, and I think that it's a serious matter. And as we get more laxed and casual moving around and not wearing masks, we have to take it seriously, which is why we just said, Nancy Pelosi, wear that mask yeah. because you are leading our country, and we need to look at you and see somebody who's taking it seriously and really enacting things to save our lives. Totally well said. We're 4% of the world's population. We have 25% of the deaths of coronavirus. Let's take a look at our poll results. We have 84% of you saying the pandemic is what worries you about 16% for crime. Thank you for writing in. Always do so. Coming up on DBL, meet a man who's proving it's never too late to be yourself. This is one of my favorite interviews I've ever done. He tells us why he came out as gay at 90 by accident. Welcome back to DBL. Born just before the Great Depression, Kenneth Feltz almost lived his entire life in the closet as a gay man. He got married, he became a father, he even secretly fell in love with another man. As a senior, he set out to find the man he loved, but sadly discovered Kenneth has, uh, he passed away. He discovered his lover had passed away. This led him to share his true colors in today's DBL Spotlight. 
Hello, Kenneth. Welcome to Daily Blast Live. Your coming out story is fascinating. So can you explain to us how being in quarantine actually led to you coming out at 90 years young? Yes, um, just starting last July, I had some medical problems, including cancer, and I was quarantined at home for quite a while. And then before I was finished with that, uh, became the virus. It was suggested that I might write my biography, something to do during this mm. lockdown. And uh, as I moved along, I brought up many, many old memories and some of them pretty painful. One day my daughter was talking to me and uh, I just blurted out to her totally out of the blue that I wish I had never left Philip. She had no idea who Philip was. And uh, that's when I had to start explaining to her what it was because I had planned to go to my grave carrying my alter ego with me wow. but I had to explain to it and she was very receptive of the time I had back in 1957 and 58 with Philip in California so after I came out to her then I decided I'd come out to my friends and I posted on Facebook to my friends I thought uh, <laughs> that I was coming out unfortunately I hit the uh, public page too and it went everywhere. I mean it went all over the globe I got messages from every country there is I think that is the best mistake you ever made. Uh, I want to kind of just get a little personal here. What for you, Ken, was the hardest part about being in the closet for so long, about hiding Philip and that entire alter ego? What do you think was the hardest part for you? The hardest part was having to always check myself, yeah. like even wearing clothing. I had to make sure that I was being conservative because I was afraid if I dressed in bright colors, people would think I was gay and I didn't want to come out. Same thing happened with anything else I do. I wouldn't go to a gay movie. I wouldn't buy a gay book. Wow. Anything that might make other people think I was gay, I had to avoid. The biggest thing on coming out was the freedom. I could do all those things now. So I heard you celebrated your first Pride this year as an openly gay man, Mazel Tov, congratulations. But most Pride events were canceled due to the pandemic. Were you still able to make it special for yourself? I did, they had a 5K race. This race right here. Ooh. Even though I use a walker, I decided to enter the race in order to raise funds for the BLGT Center. I raised just under $1,000 in contributions for the center as a community. We're still together. Wow. You have so much freedom, as you said, but it comes with uh, doing good and taking action for others, and it's so lovely. Uh, right now, Kenneth, there are people that are in the closet right now watching, and I just want you to look in the camera and tell us, what would you say to someone who might be afraid for all of those reasons to come out? I found that the world is just full of people who will love you if you let them know who you really are and you tell them what you want to be and then they just grab you and hug you. It's great. <laughs> That's unbelievable. I got to say, I love this story and I'm so glad you hit the wrong button, Mr. Felt. I'm so glad you hit the wrong button. <laughs> it's such a move I would have made. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us, Kenneth. Please stay safe and please stay full of pride and color. We love it. We'll be right back. Thank you.
Welcome back to DBL. From sleeping at work to froze, we're going to take a look at some of the most interesting Google searches during the COVID-19 pandemic. You ready? Here's today's Rise and Thrive, sponsored by SoClean. Zipia.com studied Google trends from each state between April and August. There were a lot of quarantine-related searches like Zoom backgrounds in California, getting a cruise refund in North Car Carolina, and the quarantine 15 in New York. Now, Coloradans' most interesting search, how to stop drinking, having trouble sleeping, ranked high in Texas, and how to sleep at work was the most interesting search in Florida. When it comes to sleep for ways to rest easy, go to SoClean.com or call 1-800-528-6029. Did you um, see that high school student that showed everybody how to sleep on the Zoom call? You just set it to like a three second start over oh, and it's just smart. you sitting there unless oh, you unless dude. they call on you. That's not good. Not suggesting kids. Do I that. did want to call out Ray's vibe who said that um, Carol Baskin, her first dance should be to Eye of the Tiger. Yes, we laughed in the studio about that, Ray. That Bravo. was hilarious. Bravo. DBL's new every day. We'll Ray's see you gonna same take time, my job. Same place tomorrow. I'll see you Ray's tomorrow. Bye.